Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy Enrico Guapo, man. Street Certified News. We back with another one. I wanted to bounce back real quick, man, uh, with part two uh, of this hobo story. First off, man, we just wanted to come out, keep it real clear, man. You know, there was a few corrections that we had to make to part one. We're not going to make any excuses. We're not going to, you know what I'm saying, make a whole bunch of long story about what happened. But we made uh, corrections to part one. Um, at this time, part one is corrected. And we will, you know, continue with the exact 100% right information in part two. We do stand by everything in part one. So I don't want, if this is the first time you're watching the video, I don't want you to feel like, oh man, they said they made a mistake in part one. We made a, a small mistake. And really, the mistake was backed up, like I said, by a lot of mainstream media outlets. Uh, no excuse to us. But, you know, this was not the first time this mistake has been made. And, you know, the mistake has not been corrected on a number of outlets. We are not one of those. We corrected our first video and we will move forward with the right information in our second video. We really just wanted to, you know what I'm saying, first off, let y'all know that. So for everybody who watched part one, man, stay tuned. We got part two coming up, man. We're going to get right into it. Um, the Hobos, man. Chicago's Deadliest Game, part two. Uh, where we get into, man, who all snitched on the hobos, man? Let's get right into it. On January 4th, 2017, a jury returned verdicts of guilty on all counts against all six trial defendants of the hobo street gang. The jurors found the six men, including hobos leader Gregory Bolex Chester, Paris Poe, Arnold Armstrong Counsel, Gabrielle Louis Bush, William Joe Buck Ford, and Derek D. Block Vaughn guilty of racketeering, conspiracy, and five murders. Following their January 2017 conviction, the five alleged leaders of the Hobo Street Gang would appeal. When the leadership of the Hobos appealed their conviction in late 2017, certain details about cooperating statements and testimony given at the original trial would be made public. In part one, we really wanted to, you know, break down for you guys the origins as well as, you know, the 10 year reign of the Hobo Street Gang. Um, there was a lot once the trial started and like once these dudes had got indicted man There was like so much information that was out there. We really didn't believe we could put it all in the uh, in the one part So part two we're gonna really uh, break down the appeal of the six members that took at the trial and lost and then about eight months later they appealed their conviction. The government did close this trial off to the public as well as uh, I believe it's like they squashed the jury, meaning that they made the jury anonymous. No one knew who the jury was. And in addition to that, there were no cameras and no kind of public people allowed inside the court. Like we believe that by them doing that, it created a little bit of confusion. Um, we'll speak on that later. Also, uh, the dude Cashel Williams, we wanted to speak, you know, directly on this dude Cashel Williams uh, in part one. You know, we stand by the statement where we said that Cashel Williams today could be considered one of the founding members of, you know, the old block 600 THF, that whole OTF, that lane of the BDs. We stand by it that today Cashel Williams could be considered one of the founding members, one of the OGs of those guys. Um, we did not, we never said that Newtown started O Block. We never said that Newtown started Wick City. We were simply stating that before places like Wick City and O Block and 600 and THF, before those places were like heavily run and filled with uh, BDs, man, a lot of BDs from Newtown and a lot of BDs from Fifth Ward would eventually spread out and be a part of the creation of these other newer factions like 600 like O Block, which was originally wick city so that's what we meant by that like i said we stand by it people contacted us and you know it was people who sent us the original information on dude and that's a lot of what they saying about the dude cash shell is like hey you know dude trying to position himself as one of the you know top members og whatever you want to call it and you know he got this paperwork out there so we definitely wanted to make this public on appeal each trial defendant argued that the government lacks sufficient evidence to prove the existence of a racketeering conspiracy and their participation in it. Defendants contended that there was insufficient evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that an enterprise known as the Hobos even existed. However, 
It would be later discovered that several witnesses, including hobos, insiders, and enemies, testified that the hobos were an organization slash gang that conducted criminal activities. William Joe Buck Ford, in a secretly recorded conversation with hobo turned cooperator Chad Todd, discussed how they were at the time the hottest gang in the streets. On these recorded calls, Ford also referred to his squad as the Hobo Dirty Low and would also later talk about his and Todd's rank in the organization. Chad Todd and Rodney Jones were each hobos before cooperating against them. Their testimony that the hobos existed and that they were members was deemed by the government as sufficient evidence of the organization's existence, thus proving the RICO. Todd testified that he received Bush's and Council's blessing to call himself a hobo in 2007, while Ronald Jones of the Met Boy faction also became a hobo sometime in 2006 after starting to sell drugs for and committing crimes with people that were hobos. Eventually, Ronald Jones would roll his entire Met Boys into the hobo organization by working their drug packages exclusively. Prosecutors say the hobos dealt in narcotics and illegal guns and are responsible for a slew of murders, including those of police informants. And the judge uh, was intending to send a strong message that when people engage in this sort of violent conduct, it will not be tolerated and there will be consequences and people will be in prison for, for lengthy, lengthy sentences. I remember then when I was a beat cop and they just wreaked havoc over this city and they earned every day of the sentencing that they got. Most, if not all, of the defendants are now in their 30s or 40s. Superintendent Johnson says he hopes these very heavy sentences send a message to the younger gang members of today. Live at the Dirksen Federal Building, Eric Hong, ABC7. During the appeal of Chester, Poe, Council, Bush, Ford, and Vaughn, it was discovered that another hobo, Kenneth Bland, turned evidence against them when he testified that Fat Shorty, Alonzo Cole, was also one of the hobos, as were Arnold Council, Paris Poe, Rodney Jones, the Brown Twins, and Cheat, Gary Chester. Two additional men, Kevin Montgomery and Marcus Morgan, would also testify at the original trial, confirming their participation in crimes committed by the hobos. Though they ran in similar circles, the two men, however, would never become official members. In addition to lower level members cooperating against hobo leadership, mid-level members such as Gary Chester and Byron Brown would plead guilty before the original trial, thus signing statements admitting to certain criminal activities with members that were still fighting their case, i.e. what Gunna did to Young Thug, causing some to say Brown and Chi also cooperated. Enemies of the gang will also testify, including Courtney Johnson of Mickey Cobra, who testified that his gang was in conflict with a gang called the Hobos in 2007. And the aforementioned Cashel Williams, a member of the Fifth Ward faction of the Black Disciples. He testified that Fifth Ward and Newtown allied BD factions were in conflict with the Dirty Low and the Hobos in September 2007. Cashel Williams will also give first person witness testimony against the Hobo Street Gang when two of his friends, including BD leader Antonio Beans Blewett, were gunned down in a drive by shooting while leaving a funeral. Williams would be the third passenger in the car when his friends Antonio Beans Blewett and Gregory Slap O'Neill were shot and killed. And Williams would testify that although he did not see the shooter, he did see the hobos on the scene after the shooting. In the end, Witnesses from inside and outside of the group testified that the hobos were an association and an organization and gang. Many witnesses recounted the brutality and vicious nature of how the hobos did business. And with all of the statements from witnesses, cooperators, and those charged, combined with ballistic evidence connecting many of the violent crimes, appeal judge, chief judge, upheld the jury's original finding of guilty. Though some hated them and some loved them, no matter what side you were on in the early 2000s, everyone in the streets feared them. Eventually brought down in its entirety by the federal government, the hobo street gang in its 10 year run would go down as Chicago's deadliest gang. Appreciate y'all for rocking with us, man. It's your boy MXL Guapo. Street certified news, man. The most reputable source for urban media, man. Hey, make sure you smack that like button, smack that subscribe button, man. Drop a comment. Let us know, man. Was you rocking with 
You know what I'm saying? This story that we did on the hobos, man. Also, man, in the comments, man, let us know what other Chicago organizations slash gangsters, man, that, you know what I'm saying, you think we should do stories on. You know, we really don't like doing stories on, like, current stuff. So even though, you know, we did the O-Block shit, man, I really didn't want to focus on, like, the government versus O-Block. That's why we just really spoke on the cooperators because, you know, they currently fighting their case. Um, we also wanted to say, man, um, RIP everyone. You know, in this culture, drill culture, hip hop culture, whatever you want to call it, man. Um, sometimes you see people who pick sides. You know, they say might say R.I.P. this guy, but then they won't say R.I.P. that guy. We want to say R.I.P. everyone, man. R.I.P. King Von. R.I.P. F.B.G. Duck, man. R.I.P. F.B.G. Cash, man. R.I.P. F.B.G. Brick, man. R.I.P. D. Thing, man. You see what I'm saying? R.I.P. All of these men. Um, we are not here to pick sides. We are here to report the news from a street perspective. Like I tell everybody, man, I grew up in Chicago my whole life. I was just one of them dudes who never had to pick sides. Some people know what neighborhood I'm from and know, you know, you might see me with certain gas and you might think I'm over there, think I'm over there. But I always been about one thing, man, and that's upliftment of my people and us getting some money. So... I'm I felt like I was always able to do that with both sides. So I never got, you know, tied up in the bullshit. I will say, however, man, shout out the guys, man. People know who I'm talking about. I'm gonna always ride with my people, but I'm gonna always keep our reporting and street certified news, man. I'm gonna keep it neutral, man. We want to speak on both sides from both stories. You know what I mean? And I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, man, hey, we appreciate y'all, man. Love y'all for rocking with us, man. Road to 50K. Man, share the videos with your friends, man. We trying to get the 50K, man. I really want to do something special for you guys when we get there. I'll almost kind of like let you guys pick what that is. So, man, well, as we get close, man, I'll definitely reach out and, and, and see what you guys are thinking about. But, man, it's your boy, Michelle Guapo, man. Street certified news, man. We love y'all, bro. We out.